What is up everybody? This is your guy Kali and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the Red Dragon K631 RGB aka the Caster. And all of you Greco-Roman mythology buffs don't have to worry because yes, Red Dragon also has a Pollux keyboard which I'll be covering in a future video. Also, I should go ahead and say that this keyboard was provided free of charge by Red Dragon for this video. No additional money changed hands for me to say one thing or the other. However, because I did get this keyboard for free, it could be considered payment in kind. And as such, I will mark it as a paid promotion just in case. With that admin out of the way, this is Red Dragon's latest 65% mechanical gaming keyboard with hot swappable switches, RGB LEDs, and reprogrammable keys. Sorta. Because this keyboard is so new to market that as of the recording of this video, the programming software isn't actually out yet. I am keeping an eye on reddragonshop.com as well as reddragonzone.com, so as soon as the software for this keyboard as well as the Pollux are available, I'll get a couple of tutorial videos up. Inside the box, you receive the keyboard itself, the manual, a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable with a USB-A to USB-C adapter, a box of spare switches, a keycap puller, a key switch puller, as well as a sticker with the Red Dragon logo. Now, before I dig into the keyboard itself, I wanna take a look at a couple of these accessories, starting with the USB cable, because this is something kinda of special. Not only did they think to include the right angle connector, which is extremely useful for keyboards with a side mounted USB connector, but they also thought ahead and included the type C connector that I mentioned earlier. And, I will also say that I like the fact that the type A connector is permanently attached to the type C cable. The only downside is the fact that this seems to be a USB 2.0 connector as opposed to a USB 3.0 connector. However, you don't need 3.0 speeds for a keyboard, so I'm not really that upset. Next, let's talk about the keycap puller, because I'm always happy to see a wire puller as opposed to one of these little plastic pullers. They're just so much more reliable. Now, if only Red Dragon would get rid of the U-shaped key switch pullers, instead, I'd rather they go with some of these hybrid pullers because this tweezer design is so much better for pulling switches. Now that I've got those tangents out of the way, let's take a look at the keyboard proper. And, I just want to say that I am so happy to see more 65% keyboards on the market because this has become my favorite profile, mainly due to the fact that it has arrow keys. And I didn't think I would miss those as much as I do when using a 60% keyboard, especially one that requires you to hold down the function key to use the arrow keys as opposed to toggling them on and off. Now, as for the features this keyboard has, as I previously mentioned, this is a wired only keyboard. There is no Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz connectivity. And as such, this keyboard is ridiculously light. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the K617 Fizz that I reviewed a while back. And for the curious, let's go ahead and just bring my little scale into the shot. Give that a zero out. Bring it down and there we go. And as you can see, it's just over 435 grams, which is pretty dang light, even for a keyboard that doesn't have an internal battery pack. Next up on the back of the keyboard, we have my favorite, the little feet. Though sadly, it does seem like we're already breaking with the tradition set by the Fizz and Caster has left the tribal tattoo phase. Now, before I go on an extremely long tangent about the hot swap capabilities of this keyboard, let's talk about the function layer. If you hold down the function key and hit one of the numbers from one to zero, you're going to get F1 through F10. If you hold down function and hit the hyphen key, you're going to get F11, and the equals key is going to give you F12. Holding down function and hitting the left bracket will give you home, and the right bracket will give you end. And here's something a lot of people are going to be happy about. 
because if you hold down the function key and hit the semicolon, you're going to get print screen. This is something a lot of people were asking about in the Fizz review. Though, if you already have the Fizz, you could always use the hotkey combination of Windows, Shift, and S to pretty much do the same thing, if not slightly better, since you're able to select which part of the screen you want to screenshot. Next up on apostrophe, we have insert. The function key and Z is going to be your volume down. X is volume up. C is mute. V is stop. B is previous track. N is play pause. M is next track. If you hold down the function key and hit comma, that's going to reduce your backlight speed and the period is going to increase your backlight speed. The up arrow is going to increase your backlight's brightness and the down arrow is going to decrease your backlight's brightness. Page down is going to cycle through the 20 different built-in backlight modes and the right arrow is going to change the backlight color. Function plus the left arrow is going to change the direction of the backlights. Now, as for the function layer key combinations that are not marked in any of the additional legends, if you hold down the function key and hit the Windows key, that's going to disable the Windows key as well as the app key until you hold down function and hit Windows again. Holding down function and hitting backspace is going to turn off the LEDs and function plus tab is going to allow you to set up a custom LED mode, which I'll demonstrate shortly. But before that, I should go ahead and mention that if you hold down function and then hold down the escape key for three seconds, that's going to revert your keyboard back to factory default mode. Now let's talk about the custom lighting mode. And it's moments like this that make me happy that I go through such excruciating detail in these videos, because this is a feature that if you go by the manual, it's not gonna make any sense. Now, first and foremost, let's just go ahead and hold down function and hit tab. And that's gonna show us the default setting for this layer. Let me read out the manual verbatim and then show you how to actually set up the custom backlight. The line that we're looking for is right here. Function plus tab. Press function and tab to get ready for setting the backlight colors on keys. Tab key is now your palette. Press function and tab for color switching, including eight color options and light off mode. Meanwhile, three indicators, num lock, caps lock, and scroll lock, twinkle. Press the desired keys for color settings. Finally, press function plus tab key to save the setting. Now, translations aside, there is one glaring issue with those directions. Because if I hold down function and hit tab again, this will indeed set us up to create our own custom light mode. And on the side, the caps lock is indeed twinkling. Though there are no scroll lock or num lock indicators on this keyboard, so sadly that twinkle is absent. As for the main issue with the instructions as written, it says that you need to hold down function and hit tab again for color switching. But, Notice the twinkle has stopped. That means that it's actually saved the setting, so I just have blank keys and that's all that's going to be on the custom layer. Instead, what you should do is hit function and tab to once again begin the twinkle, and then you need to hold down function and hit the right arrow key to change which color you're going to be setting your keys to. Notice how the color of tab has changed? As the manual said, tab is your palette. So if I hold down function again, it's going to change to another color and then another and then another all the way through until off. So let's say I want to set things to, oh, I don't know, green, because of course I do. I've got green set on the tab key. Then all I have to do is hit my custom keys hold down function and hit tab again. And now this is my custom layer. I can go to any other layer on the keyboard. Ah, that one's kind of boring. Let's go to this one. Sine wave, Clive Faker. Or if I get tired of Clive Faker, hold down the escape key, my board will flash, and we're back to factory defaults. And now it is WASD again.
the hot swap has to be one of the primary selling points for the caster keyboard. And I know some of you are probably thinking, but Cly, pretty much every Red Dragon keyboard has hot swap. And you would be correct, but not this hot swap. Because if I take my switch puller, just get it on in there, and then bring in my switch puller, try to do this through a viewfinder because it's of course not easy, you're going to see something kind of different. Or not due to the way my lighting is set up. Let's just bring one over here. There we go. Yay, boom arm ring lights. Those of you who already have a Red Dragon keyboard or have watched my other reviews of Red Dragon keyboards should probably be noticing something a little bit different here. First off, we are not dealing with the standard sleeve style hot swap. Instead, we have sockets. And that is going to be a major difference between the caster and pretty much every other Red Dragon keyboard that came before it when it comes to switch compatibility. Fortunately, I do have this little sleeve style hot swap 1% keyboard and a cherry switch. And if I try to plug the cherry switch into the keyboard, eh, it's not going to happen. These pins are just too darn thick for sleeve style hot swap. But thanks to the fact that we have sockets, I can take this cherry green and pop it right in. But wait, there's more. Because if I go back in and take the cherry switch out, which once again is not the easiest thing to do through a viewfinder. In fact, let's cut to when I have that done. You might notice that there are two additional holes here. And that's because not only is this a socketed hot swap that is compatible with cherry profile switches, it is also five pin compatible. One more side note, when you're talking about mechanical keyboard switches, the number of pins on a switch doesn't just mean the number of metal contacts, unlike when you're talking about most other electronics. Instead, it refers to every single protrusion on the bottom of a switch. So this original Red Dragon switch is considered a three pin switch, despite the fact that it only has two contacts. And this Mozano Eve switch that I reviewed in a previous video is counted as a five pin switch due to the additional posts here. And of course, it is also compatible with the caster. On the product listing for this keyboard, it mentions 99.8% switch compatibility, and I'm likely to agree with that. And there you have the Red Dragon K631 Caster, a little 65% mechanical gaming keyboard that is one of the first five pin compatible hot swap keyboards from Red Dragon. And I am so happy to be able to say that, mainly due to the fact that keeping up with the number of switches that are compatible with sleeve style hot swap is kind of difficult. And a lot of the people that are commenting on my Red Dragon Fizz video asking about the switch compatibility are probably going to be very happy with this keyboard. Now let's talk price point. As of the recording of this video on Amazon, the caster comes in at $52.99, whereas on reddragonshop.com, it comes in at $54.99. However, if you use promo code CLIFAKER on the Red Dragon Shop website, that's one word, you will save 10% on your purchases. And yes, that is an affiliate code, which means I do get a small commission, but you pay no extra. And of course, whether you wanna buy this keyboard on reddragonshop.com or amazon.com, I will have the appropriate affiliate links down in the description below. Also, even without the discount code, this is still one of the lowest cost five pin compatible hot swap keyboards I've ever come across. 
And on that note, I definitely feel like I've rambled on long enough about this keyboard, and I really should be getting to Caster's half-brother Pollux. So, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.